All right, y'all, first and foremost, give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his son, the Hamashiach, who we know as Yahweh Shai, Yeshua, Yehoshua. We mostly know as Jesus Christ. Um, wanted to glean from this story. I was thinking, I was sitting back, I was thinking about, you know, what story could we could we glean from that's similar to uh what we've seen transpire between our two brothers new breed and ringo tv and the only thing that really came a few things came to mind a few one uh, came to mind but they kind of out of context you know it's kind of a it's kind of to and even the one that i'm choosing is not exactly the same um but the um the unjust steward came to mind um what was the other one mm, i forget the other one no no the um the parable of the laborers came to mind uh and just being that the context and what we were supposed to glean from them stories are kind of off of it um it's kind of a little too far off I decided not to go with them. But we're going to talk about the story of Gehazi. We said we was going to come back here. So that all praise to the Most High. You know, praise y'all for bringing us back to here because we, if you was with us with the Shulamite story, we said, hey, we got to come back to Gehazi. Gehazi's there in the Shulamite story. He's there with uh, Elijah. Once you start dealing with the prophet Elijah, you got to deal with Gehazi, his servant. Gehazi, his servant. And so we're going to deal with that, man. So if y'all can just bear with me, we're just going to read a chapter of the word of God. We're just going to read a chapter. I know you're used to the, what they call it, the dirty sector, but we want to just read some of y'all's word. Um, Just one chapter, y'all. Bear with us for one chapter. Can you do that? Can you bear with us for one chapter? Hold on one second. We're going to transition in. Boom. All right. We're going to format that thing in uh, 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1. All right. We're going to deal with the story of Gehazi. All right. Gehazi. It says, now Naaman, Gehazi and Naaman. All right. That's that's how we're going to title this. Gehazi and Naaman. Um, and like I say, it's not exactly the same. It's not exactly the same but it's, it's some similarities here that where we can glean from uh verse one second Kings chapter five verse one naaman captain of the host of the king of syria i was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the lord had given deliverance unto syria who gave deliverance unto syria the lord yahweh or yahweh yo hey va hey he gave deliverance yahuwah unto syria naaman was a captain of the host king of of the host of king of uh assyria all right he's a captain in the assyrian or the Assyria army right he was a mighty man of valor but he was a leper and the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. See, we got to understand. We got to understand, you know, the time frame. What, what, what's going on around this? And this is when the Syrians, they went full fledged and snatched Israel out of there yet. But they've been going in with little companies. They're starting, you know, they've been chipping away a little bit. But they haven't really gone in full fledged. But they don't let them know that it's that it's smoke in the city. All right. And so they've gone in and they've got an Israel and they got a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. So Naaman then got him a little servant from the house of Israel to be his wife's maid. And she said unto her mistress, With God, my Lord with god my lord were with the prophet that is in samaria who's the prophet in samaria it's elisha elisha for he will recover him of his leprosy 
And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus saith the maid that is of the land of Israel. All right, so the maid, the slave, the, the, the little maid, the little slave girl from Israel, is telling her mistress, who his name is wife, that your husband can get cured by the prophet that's in um uh, that's in Samaria. Get cured by one of our prophets. All right, and then once she, once she heard that, she went and so, you know, the thing started spreading, you know, dust and dust, and you know, end up getting back word. Um said the maid that is of the land of Israel. End up getting back. Watch this. And well, let me just read it. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the man uh, that that is of the land of Israel. They told him what the slave girl said from Israel that he can be healed. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. Now understand, these folks already done went in there a little bit and you know, slapped it real up just a little, just a little. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver. And 6,000 pieces of gold and 10 changes of raiment, you know. And then you see the level of how much a raiment meant back then, you know. And me, you know, being, you know, I make garments. I can even see this even in our brains today, man. I done seen people put all kinds of stuff for them Passover garments. They don't put rent. I done seen brothers put rent in front of them Passover garments. Um, well, put the Passover garments in front of rent, right? I mean, I I gotta get this garment. I pay my rent next week. I pay my I pay my rent next week. Um, but we see that you know he's 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 departing with silver, gold, and clothes, and he's doing that to give to uh the prophet Elijah for the favor of healing his commander Naaman because the Lord verse one again, Lord had given deliverance unto Assyria. The Lord did that. And the writers are knowing that. That's saying we have to understand the writers of second Kings are noting this in their history. That's going to be here forever. How the Lord delivered us to Assyria through this captain named Naaman. And Naaman now needs a favor from our prophet who prophesied that we would go in there. Oh, man. Verse 6, and he brought the letter of the king to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter has come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes and said, I am, am I God? To kill and to make alive, that this man do a sin unto me or re to recover a man of his leprosy. Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. This joker won't smoke. He know darn well I can't heal no leper, heal nobody or no leprosy. Who he think I am? This joker just wanna. He just wanna. He just wanna go to war. And he done rent his clothes, man. So Naaman came with his horses and his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him saying, go and did I miss a verse? I'm sorry, I did miss a verse. Verse eight. And it was so when Elijah, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes that he sent to the king saying wherefore has thou rent thy clothes let him come now to me and he shall know that there is a prophet in israel i sent him to me why are you ripping your clothes why are you getting all upset and getting worried just send him here so he can know that there is a true prophet in israel so naaman came with his horses and his chariot and stood at the door of the house of elijah and elijah sent a messenger unto him saying go and wash in Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean Elijah didn't even go out to talk to him Elijah sent one of his messengers out hey sent his messenger out man just tell him to go to Jordan he here 
go out there, tell them, go to Jordan and, and dip in there seven times. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. So Naaman is mad because he, he you know, hey, man, I thought you was going to come out here. You didn't even come out here to see me. I thought you were going to come out here and clap your hands and, and then, you know, in, in the power of the name of the Lord and, you know, and, and get me clean and make this great spectacle and show in front of everybody. Um, are not a Bana in, in, in far, 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 far rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel. May I not wash in them and be clean. So he turned and went away in a rage. So Naaman was like, well, well, then you got me going to Jordan, man. We got better rivers in Damascus, you know, and it's just showing that the healing ain't may not look like what you think it's going to look like. You know, that messenger, that messenger that sent to you to give you that word may not look the way you want him to look. They couldn't realize that Elijah was John, the, John the Baptist was Elijah. They couldn't realize that Christ was the son of, was the son of David, that Christ was the Messiah because that messenger didn't look the way they wanted him to look. He wasn't mighty like Saul. He wasn't tall. He wasn't, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't, you know, astute. Like he wasn't, he wasn't bold. So you got to be careful of that. Where we at, y'all? Verse 13. And his servants came near and spake to him. Spake unto who? We talking about the Naaman. They came, they spoke to Naaman. And said, my father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldest thou have not done it? How much rather than when he saith to thee, wash and be clean. Like you would have did something crazy if he told you to, you know, throw some dirt on your head, spin on top of your head, you know, and, and, and do three backward flips. You would have did it. But he told you something simple is just go, go wash and be clean. What, like, what's the problem? What's the problem? But again, it don't look the way you think it's supposed to look. And a lot of times we miss our blessing. A lot of times we miss the truth. A lot of times we don't get the proper message. A lot of times we get misled thinking that things are supposed to look a certain way, looking at the messenger a certain way. Verse 14, then when he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. Okay, name indeed understood what his servant had said. And then, you know, taking the advice, think about the servant relationship. Think about the servant master relationship that we hear here. The servants having to tell him, look, master man, listen, you know, he a prophet. Why don't you just go down there and wash? Then initially we have the slave Israelite little girl. You know, she don't have a mindset like. Oh, I, I, I wish he was dead. I hope he die. I hope my master die. You know. She was like, listen, man, you need to go down there. And it seemed like she had compassion on her master. Tell him to go down there and get saved of that leprosy. Man, we got somebody down there. We got a true prophet. We serve a true God. She go down there and get saved. Why don't you go down there and get that leprosy off of you? And then, you know, she got to take credit. You know, of course, all, all, all credit goes to the most high. But she, you know, we don't know her name. But the little slave girl is, little slave girl is written in history of what she did because of the things that transpired from this. Um, but thinking about the attitudes of the servants. Think of the attitude that they had. And if they had the attitude that a lot of us have today, um, you know, actually this is an example of her being a light. Her being a light to the Gentiles. You know, her spreading a, a gospel. It's not the gospel, but it's a gospel, man. We got, like, you know, we got a true prophet down there. 
I want to keep harping it on that though. But I, I do want y'all to get that message. Uh, I know I ain't got much time with you. Um, verse 15, and he returned to the man of God, he and all his company and came and stood before him and said, behold, now I know there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. This is a, a Syrian. Saying, I know now that little girl done sent me down here, the king of Syria done sent me with the coins to reward you and gave the written letter to your king. I done dipped in this water and I done got healed of this leprosy. Couldn't nobody do it. I done, I done, I done went to all these different deities trying to do it and all these different vineyards and on top, on top of all these different mountains, you know, in front of all these different altars, nobody could heal this leprosy. I know now, I know now there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing. And this is the part we get into. <laughs> take a blessing of thy servant. All right. Did this great work for him. Take a blessing. Take this blessing. He said, as the Lord liveth before whom I stand, I receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. So Elijah didn't want the reward. Elijah didn't want the money, didn't want the silver, didn't want the gold, didn't want the 10 changes of raiment. Said, take it back. I don't want it. Now, Amen the leper, he like, man, please take it. You got to take it. And, you know, I, and I use this story because sometimes when we have situations like that, helping each other move, uh, doing favors for each other, loaning people money, um, you know, having to, you know, having to take somebody, kids somewhere, you know, when you're doing favors or you're doing certain things for certain people and you're helping people out. Um, sometimes we have situations like this where the money's not involved and you say, no, 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 you know, keep the money. You know what I'm saying? Keep the money. And um, we see here that this is being, you know, this glory is being given to the Lord through this situation. <clears throat> uh, where we at, y'all? You know I be getting lost. Naaman said, uh, okay, but he was through verse 17. And Naaman said, shall there not then I pray thee? be given to thy servant two mules burden of earth all right so now naaman is asking okay you don't want them but let me let me let me get two of them mules let me get two mules and and load them up with the earth with the dirt of this land let me load them up because i know that the god the true god is in this land let me take some of this land with me so I can sacrifice to the true God of Israel. This is a heathen. For thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto the Lord. Give me some of the earth I, I, and so I can sacrifice to the one true God. I will not give any sacrifices to these other gods. Verse 18, in this thing, the Lord pardoned. And then he's asking another question here. He says, in this thing, pardon uh thy servant that when my master goeth into the house of Rimmon to worship there and he leaneth on my hand and i bow myself to the house of Rimmon, when i bow down myself in the house of Rimmon, the lord pardon thy servant in this thing and so now he's now naaman because he's a commander the leper who's now healed and has the flesh of a child he's saying uh, to Elijah, you know, tell, you know, ask the Lord to pardon me, you know, when I go back because the king, he, he, he's going to bring me into that, that false temple and he's going to make me bow down. But, you know, under these conditions, I'm going to have to bow down to this, to this, to this, to this God. I'm going to have to bow down to, but I understand that God is nothing. Can he pardon me in this thing? And Elijah, watch what he says. And he said unto him, go in peace. So he departed from him a little way. But Gehazi, this is what we're getting into, but Gehazi, the servant of Elijah, 
The man of God said, Behold, my master have spare name in this Syrian. Gehazi looking like, wait a minute, he ain't take nothing. He letting him take all the stuff back. Now, Gehazi, we know, is like, you know, Elijah was, you know, Elisha was the servant of Elijah. Okay, and then when Elijah got taken up, he got a double portion from Elijah. He got a double portion from Elijah. And now Elisha has his servant with him, which is Gehazi, which kind of has, you know, He's supposed to be that that what he was to Elijah, but he has some character traits. He has some character flaw. And we was talking about that in the class we did on the, the Shunammite, the video we did on the Shunammite woman. He says, but Gehazi, the servant of Elijah, man of God, said, Behold, my master has spared the aim in this Syria, and not receiving at his hands, in his hands, that which he had brought, that which he brought. But as the Lord liveth, I will run after him, and take somewhat of him. I'm gonna get something. Y'all ever seen that that meme with uh with Denzel Washington and somebody else? They're like, man, we gonna I'm gonna get something. I'm leaving here with something. So Gehazi followed after Naaman, and when Naaman saw him running after him, he he lighted down from the chariot to meet him, and he said, "Is all well?" So uh, and he said, "I got y'all should yeah, y'all should get that." And he said, all is well. My master have sent me, saying, behold, even now. And then look at the lie. My master sent me. Who is his master? Elijah. Elisha. Saying, behold, even now there become to me from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of raiment. I got two brothers. It's coming from, he just, just created this lie. It's all a lie. It's all a lie so he can get a little bread. Not saying that the brother, any brother's lie, I told you the story is a little, I'm just saying, you know, we, the, what we have, what we have here, we gleaning from a favor was done. Someone was helped and was told, hey, you know, you ain't got to pay me, you know, take the money back. Um, this was all done uh, through the Lord. You got a new believer in the Lord is just only going to sacrifice to the God of Israel. But we got Gehazi following after him. And he wants to, he wants to, he wants a little of that money, man. He wants a little bit of that. And then Haman said, be content. Take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of raiments and laid them upon two of his servants and they bear them before him. Oh, well, Naaman said, why are you being so content here, man? Go and get two. Verse 24, and when he came to the tower, he took him from their hand and bestowed them in the house. And he let the men go and they departed. And he went in and stood before his master. Who is his master? Elisha. And Elijah said unto him, whence comest thou? And that's a facetious, you know, a minister of questions. Elisha already knows the answer. Where's whence comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went nowhither. I ain't been nowhere. And he said unto him, Went not mine heart with thee? What is he saying here? Went not mine heart with thee, man. Spiritually, I was there. Spiritually, I seen everything. What you do? What you think, man? You've been with me this whole time. You don't know God with me. You don't know the things that you don't know. Because it was another incident where, where um, even with the class with the Shulamite woman, he was pre-warned that she would come. That she would come. Is that, is that am I mixing them stories? No, I think I'm mixing those stories. It was another one. No, it was another story with a, a at the at the liar. This, the class we did with at the liar, and they had wanted his daughter, I mean his child, to um to see if his child was gonna be healed, and he sent his wife um down there, and she disguised herself, but he already knew, he already knew it was warned that she was coming. But I'm only bringing that up because Gehazi seen that and he been around that. 
he should know this man of God ain't nothing to be ain't nothing you know you shouldn't be lying to him um when he turned again from the chariots to meet thee uh is it a time to receive money and to receive garments olive olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servants and may serve and that's ultimately you know where brothers have to ask themselves when they trying to uh deal with certain situations you're dealing with certain situations in charity you're doing it out of love and you're doing it out of arms and um you know is it a time is it a time to receive money is it a time to receive garments is it a time to receive uh vineyards and and sheep and and slaves you know that you know these were gifts that were given um and of course again he just being a minister of questions <laughs> you know the the obvious answer is no right uh the leprosy therefore of naaman watch this the leprosy therefore of naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever and he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow so because he tried to you know go back and get that little bread where he should have left alone he ended up being punished with leprosy and again like i said the story ain't the same y'all you know but it is you know things there should be some charity on some things we out here doing for people and um you know you can miss your blessing when that money mess around and get in your hand you can mess around and take that money and get cursed like our brother name i pray this thing was edifying I'm not done with y'all though man if you made it this far we got a little treat for you hold on if you made it this far we got a little treat for you hold on uh what i'm doing here yep 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 got a little treat for you hold on now you see this book here you may not see it but it's marks of a lost race by abba bivens bibbins okay this is abba bibbins if you talk about the origins of one west or do you talk about the origin of black hebrew israelites you're always going to mention this brother named abba bibbins all right Abba Bibbins. We're going to glean a little bit from his book. Just allegedly, this was written in the 40s, uh, 1940s. There's the copyright on this. But somebody else is, uh, somebody else is publishing this thing now. But anyway, this is page 36 that we have up here, right here. All right. And I read this the other day. I just I still gotta finish that. I'm probably finish it uh over the over the weekend. But watch what it says here. It says this is very true. Um this is verse this is uh page 36. This came about through Gehazi, the Amalekite, the servant of Elisha. Now the initial problem with this is i can't find nowhere where it says gehazi is an amalekite if y'all find it put it in the comments put it in the comments so we'll know that gehazi was an amalekite but i don't see in the text i couldn't find it in in my little research you know it was a light research but i couldn't find it and i really don't you know it's a light research because i don't i never i never thought him to be uh, Amalekite. I would always think him to be an Israelite because he's the servant of Elijah, like Elijah. Elisha was the servant of Elijah, and these were all Israelites, allegedly. So why would I think Gehazi would be uh, something different? But here we see Abba Bibin saying that Gehazi is an Amalekite. Now, why is he saying Gehazi is an Amalekite? Because he's trying to explain where the white man came from. Where did the white race come from is what he's trying to explain here. Gehazi, the Amalekite, the servant of Elisha, and because he lied to the man of God, 
the leprosy of Naaman fell on him and his seed forever. We know this should be true by referring to 2 Kings 5.27. The leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and to thy seed forever. And he went out from the presence of the leper as white as snow. Those lepers who were Amalekites were really descendants of Esau, Genesis 30, 36, verse 12. And they married into Esau, Amalekites, and they married into Esau, the red man, thus bringing forth what we call pale face. It is just like talking, it's just like taking white paint and mixing it with red paint. And you'll get, you'll get a pale color. So how they got the pale color, according to Abba Bibbins, the, you know, the forefather of this movement, you know, the create, I want to say the creator of this movement, uh, of this one West Israelism, you can definitely stamp them with that. Uh, yeah, like the Rabbi Matthews and a few other folks that, uh, that probably predate them or that he was under. Um, but look what he's saying here. And, um, I think this is dead wrong. I think Gehazi is not no Amalekite and he, this is could be fabricated. And now, you know, I don't want to say he did this maliciously or whatever the case may be. Maybe somebody told him this and he's just teaching what he was told. Um, but we have, I, I, I don't see any evidence of Gehazi being an Amalekite. Um, and if y'all have that information, please let us know. And we see here, this is how they're explaining how the white race came. So they feel like Esau was a red man, but he wasn't white. He wasn't the white man we see today until he mixed with this leper from these Amalekites. And maybe he used the Amalekite because of the Amalekites are always mentioned um, as a nation that was going to get, you know, always punished from Edom, you know, from, from all the different little tribes that come from, it always kind of mention those Amalekites. Um, but I think this is, I think this is just totally false. I think this is bogus and this is foundational. This is foundational. I also want to read up a little more and then, you know, again, this is just a little bonus, uh, for those. And we're going to get into this book more once I finish it. We're going to break these things down and see where this stuff comes from. And see if we need to be continuing holding on to it. Uh, hold on here. All right. This is, we just moved the book up a little bit. And you see, I don't wrote on the side. These are the black verses. Jacob begat Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, who are called Jews. He was the blackest of all his brothers. <laughs> When we say this, we don't mean that his brothers like where did, where can you get that from? But he's telling you his methodology. He's saying, "Hey man, you know, he finna show us. He was the blackest of all his brothers." When we say this, we do not mean that his brothers were white far far be it, but that Judah was black as the ground. Only Judah was black as the ground. We know this to be true by referring to Jeremiah 14, 2. And this is his methodology. We know it to be true because of Jeremiah 14, 2. Judah mourn of the gates thereof are language. They are black unto the ground. We did it. We did. I got a whole class a couple years ago. You can look down, search, search the, the in the in the uh title. Jeremiah 14 to revisit it. Go to my channel, search in the title, Jeremiah 14 to revisit. We did this, we probably did it a couple of times. I also have a video of Hassad. Let Hassad, I'm going to let Hassad tell you uh, because, you know, y'all y'all like to hear from him better than you will hear from me. But uh, Hassad did a video recently also, formerly of Sakari, saying, telling you that you shouldn't be using these verses to establish of uh, the Israelites as being people of color. Um, Judah mourn if the gates thereof are, uh, the gates thereof are languished, they are black unto the ground. 
Okay, and some people, well, just go watch the class, but it's it's just reading comprehension, really. King David also was of the tribe of Judah. So with this, this is his foundation. And the fact that he has this wrong mean everything he gleaned from this is going to be wrong. Because, and I'm not saying that King David wasn't somebody of color. I'm just saying the way he's trying to establish that point is false. And he's not going to be able to do it with this. All right, he's not going to be able to do it with Judah, uh, Jeremiah 14, too. Uh, King David was of the tribe of Judah. He goes to Psalms 119, 83. I am, then watch as he says. He said in the Psalms, I am like a bottle in smoke, meaning he was black. I am like a bottle in smoke, which means he is black. Let me let me look at some comparative text on that. Oh my goodness. This our forefather, y'all. This our great teacher. If I'm yeah. I see it in the NLT is I'm shriveled like a wine skin in the smoke. I've shriveled like a wine skin in the smoke. But I have not forgotten to obey your decrees for i am like a bottle in the smoke and again why does so when he's saying it's a bottle our brain is going to go to a plastic bottle or a glass bottle with smoke inside of the glass you see the translators translated it to wine skin because that was probably what they used as containers uh, mostly and you know i am like a smoke in the bottle if 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 if, if that wine uh, evidently that wine skin we had to do research on this i'm just showing you how my brain works i would need to go look at wine skins and see do wine skins shrivel up and see does that make sense which one makes more sense? We saying that it's, you know, it's a bottle and smoke, even if they're making, you know, clay bottles, could you see the smoke? Like, and then you're gonna how how are you how are you making this about being black? Either way it go, how are you making this about being black? I just uh but that was a verse that no one uses today. <laughs> And no one, I, I'm not going to say no one, because I have seen people use the leprosy and saying that that was the mark of Cain, and that's how um, white people came about. And then I've seen people say, you know, and then most of Israelite camps are going to use Genesis 25, 25 to say that, you know, Esau came out red. But the originally the the start of this thing he he wasn't saying that he wasn't using genesis 25 25 well he was that he was red but evidently that red didn't mean white that male did that red didn't mean th what we see as caucasians today that red it was just red he was kind of reddish reddish brownish maybe and because he mixed with the leper he came out pink Okay, that's that's the doctrine. Um, and his son Solomon, also of the tribe of Judah, was calmly, oh ye daughters, it was said in the Song of Solomon. I'm sorry, y'all. Solomon, also of the tribe of Judah, was black. Said in the Song of Solomon, one one five, I am black. I am black and calmly. That is another verse that is misused. That is not Solomon talking about he's black and calmly. Again, I'm not saying that Solomon wasn't black. I'm just saying Solomon did not say this in verse uh, Song of Solomon 1 and 5. That is not Solomon talking. That is the Shulamite woman talking here. It is a song. That's why I tell you, you have to know the difference between songs, poetry, history, hyperbole, metaphors, parables, types, foreshadows. You have to, we have to define all of these terminologies. 
before we start getting out here trying to teach and so forth and i didn't do it myself that's why i'm having to go back and correct things but this is why so many people are just getting up and starting to teach because um you know we're not we're not teaching we're not teaching methodology we're not teaching proper methodology we're not teaching people how to learn we just telling people stuff like he ain't teaching us how he came about i am like a bottle in smoke that means he was dark you just told me that you didn't teach it um but the song of solomon is also wrong all right so every verse we done read here is wrong i am black uh and joshua and he he calls jesus joshua which they have the same name uh who was a descendant of david was also black paul says he is he says in hebrews 7 14 it is evident that our lord sprang out of judah we use that precept also that that verse and judah was the color of the ground jacob also begat Issachar, zebulon dan joseph all right and then he kind of goes into joseph being sold uh into into slavery but that is from the book called the marks of a lost race by Abba bibbins again one of the four forefathers the leaders the starters of this black israelite movement that we have today all right the creator of that one west israelism all right he he has the book in this book is camp doctrine 101 you really don't man you get this book ain't but 100 pages 90 pages you get this book you can go out there and do exactly what they doing on the street it's gonna give you every it breaks down to deuteronomy 28 for you and lay it down for you word for word like you know we 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 got on you know we we did the video about the the parenting that we seen you know these jokers just said the exact same words uh in their sermon with the christian pastors but you'll see here in this book that a lot of you saying the exact same words you haven't learned how to think you haven't learned how to dissect the text for yourselves and if you can't dissect it for yourself how can you work out your own salvation you know you're gonna be responsible for that you can't just say hey man you know what phineas told me da 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 nah 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 all right but i pray this thing was edifying man y'all be blessed we'll see y'all on the next one shalom